Welcome, and thank you for taking a couple of minutes today to focus in on the things of God. You know, one of the greatest responsibilities we have as believers is sharing the Word of God with the people around us. And today we're going to look at a passage in Ezekiel chapter 3, starting in verse 1. And we're going to look at the call of Ezekiel and think about the way that we should be presenting that word to the people. And the things that God instructed Ezekiel that really should be part of our focus as we bring the word of God to people today. So let's look together in Ezekiel chapter 3. We'll start in verse 1. It says, He said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then go out and speak to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. And then he said to me, Son of man, eat this scroll I am giving you, and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it, and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. He then said to me, Son of man, go now to the people of Israel and speak my words to them. You're not being sent to a people of obscure speech and strange language, but to the people of Israel, not to many peoples of obscure speech and strange language, whose words you cannot understand. Surely if I had sent you to them, they would have listened to you. But the people of Israel are not willing to listen to you because they're not willing to listen to me. For all the Israelites are hardened and obstinate. But I will make you as unyielding and hardened as they are. I will make your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than flint. Do not be afraid of them or terrified by them, though they are rebellious people. And he said to me, Son of man, listen carefully and take heart of all the words I gave you to speak. Go now to your people in exile and speak. You know, there have been very few people who have been ushered into God's service uh, with a vision of God like Ezekiel had. In fact, if you keep reading, you, you read about all of the sounds and the, the sights that he saw. Some people think it might have been UFOs, of course. No, it wasn't. <laughs> but it is without a doubt one of the most incredible visions of any of the prophets. And in his vision, a voice told him that he would be sent to the rebellious people of Israel. And he was told to give them a message whether they listened or not. And the voice also told him that they would know that a prophet had spoken to them and had been among them, whether they were paying attention or not. So in the calling of Ezekiel, you can see some important things that should be true of any person that's serving the Lord. And I think one of the first things is a love of the Word of God. In verse 3, God gave Ezekiel a book, a scroll that contained the message that he had for the people of Ezekiel. Uh, and Ezekiel had to absorb it completely, so he was told to eat it. And when he ate it, it said it, it tasted as sweet as honey in his mouth. We understand that when Ezekiel had this wisdom, the, the Bible had not been put together yet. But he was still given the Word of God. Today we have the Old and New Testaments. We have the Holy Spirit to guide us, just like Ezekiel did. But no servant of God should go out and not be armed with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. In Jeremiah 37 and verse 17, when Jerusalem was in crisis and the king came to Jeremiah, he said, Is there any word from the Lord? People are looking for answers, and we have those answers. And we should be ready to talk to anyone who wants to listen about the things that God's revealed to us in His Word. The Bible conveys the mind of God and the way of salvation. And that's why we need to be able to share the Word of God as workers in the kingdom of God. But I think also a worker or a messenger of God should be able to have courage because of selflessness. Think about what makes a person bold. It isn't necessarily the fact that they're committed to their ideals. It's not just the fact that they may have goals and ambitions. People have more courage to face whatever the world has to say when they believe they're doing the right thing as they understand it, whether they're right or wrong. God gave Ezekiel a job to preach to a people who had become rebellious because they had become disenchanted. And their frustration had made them mad at God 
and anyone who came to them in the name of God. We have to make the same confrontations of people today. They're mad and they blame God for the shape that things are in. They never gave God any credit when things were good. But going out to talk to people like that is a huge challenge because they're mad at God and they're mad at you if you want to take God's side. So to be able to really take on the kind of responsibility that God wants us to have, you really need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're doing the will of God. You may never get a, an advancement as the world defines it, but there's a huge joy that comes from knowing that you're in the will of God. And you can endure because you know that you're in the will of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, Paul said, I die daily. A person armed with the Spirit of God can accept the fact that whether or not people hear what they have to say, in the end, they're going to know that a prophet was there. But another thing we should have is an identification with the people. Before you can meet the spiritual needs of people, you have to get to know them. You have to understand them on some level. Ezekiel was told to sit where they sit before he was sent to preach. Now, this is an, a classic analogy. My dad was a pastor. He used to use this. He'd say, I'd rather be a great pastor and a fair preacher than a great preacher and a fair pastor. People won't listen to what you have to say until they believe that you have an understanding of who they are. Or as the old saying goes, they don't care what you know until they know that you care. There are so many pastors who don't last very long in churches because all they want to do is focus all of their energy on sermons and very little on actually getting to know the people. It's a, a harsh fact, but uh, all pastors on some level, wherever they may be on the spectrum, all pastors are on their way out in one sense or another. The message is critically important, but the people have to know that it means as much to you as it does for them. Preaching is important, but it's far more important to get involved in the daily lives of the people. But then you have to also know when it's time to preach. You know, the order for Ezekiel came at last. God made Ezekiel the watchman over the house of Israel. He commanded him to, to warn the wicked. And just because we care about people doesn't mean we have to water the message down. God made it clear that Ezekiel's responsibility wasn't to be successful, but to be faithful in delivering that message. You know, as people of God, when we deliver the message, the success is being faithful to the call of God. But in order to preach, we have to first have something to preach, and that involves listening to God. Have you ever been teaching someone on how to do something, and you thought, you know what, in the time it takes me to tell you how to do it, I could have done it myself. Well, the truth is, in the time that other people spent listening to you, they could have done it too. Listening takes time, but not as much as some people think. We can listen a lot faster than we can talk, but most of us do a lot more talking than we do listening. We ignore that old expression that says, the reason you have two ears and one mouth is you should listen twice as much as you speak. Ezekiel listened, and he became a great prophet, and so did Isaiah, so did Jeremiah, and so will any Christian with, uh, with the desire to do what God is leading them to do. When we learn to listen to the messages that God has for us, we'll be ready when it comes time to speak. Whenever that may be, wherever it may be, God will give us those opportunities, and we'll be able to speak on God's behalf as if we were, we were God's voice, because we are on that level. Listen, today, if you're hearing the Word of God, I would pray that you would give in to that Word, that you would listen to what God has to say. And one thing I can tell you for sure that God wants every person to know is that He's loved them enough to give His only begotten Son to die for them. Today, if you haven't already made the decision, you could become a child of God. You can accept Jesus Christ as, as your Lord and Savior. 
Why not do that today? I'm going to have a prayer with you, and as I'm praying, why not let God speak to your heart in a special way? Let's pray together. Lord, again, I thank you for being with us today, and I thank you for the blessing of another day. Lord, I pray today for those watching this who've never received you as Lord and Savior, that they would open their hearts to receive you, and that you would work in all of our lives together to draw us closer to you. Use us as your mouthpiece, as your witnesses. Give us the words to say and the courage to step out in faith and be the witnesses you've called us to be. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.